This biological structure is one of the most complex, but most important in biological psychology. Knowing its structure and function will help you understand how information is passed around the body and how psychoactive drugs work in the brain. In this episode of Psych Boost, Synaptic Transmission. In this video, we're going to explain the process of this diagram. If you want a sheet to help you understand the process, you can grab it for free on my website and fill it in as we go. The link's below. So first, let me explain what this diagram is of. It's the point where two neurons almost, but not quite touch, and it's called the synapse. In the previous video, I spoke about how information travels through a neuron as an electrical impulse known as an action potential. But here, the electrical impulses can't cross from the axon terminal to the adjacent dendrite. So it must pass information on as chemical messages. These chemicals are called neurotransmitters. Let's label this diagram and then explain each part as we talk about the process. If you've seen this diagram before, you may want to pause the video and say what each arrow is pointing to. So at the top, the arrow represents the action potential that has traveled down the axon of the presynaptic neuron. The blue structure is the axon terminal of the presynaptic neuron, where the axon finishes. A neuron will have many axon terminals. Inside the axon terminal are vesicles. These contain the neurotransmitter chemicals. The gap between the blue and the pink neurons is called the synaptic cleft. This gap is tiny, about 20 to 40 nanometers. So to give you an idea how thin that is, it's about 2,500 times thinner than a sheet of paper. The membrane of the postsynaptic neuron has receptors for detecting the presence of neurotransmitters. The membrane of the presynaptic neuron has transport proteins that take neurotransmitters back into the cell. Make sure you can label this diagram up from memory, as this is a common question in examinations. Now that the synapse is labelled, let's run through the process of synaptic transmission. Firstly, an action potential arrives at the axon terminal. This causes the vesicles to merge with the membrane of the presynaptic cell, releasing the neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft. These neurotransmitters diffuse across the synaptic cleft, reaching the postsynaptic cell. Now a process called summation happens. For a new electrical action potential to form in the postsynaptic cell, the electrical charge needs to pass a threshold. This is where the neurotransmitters come in. In the synaptic cleft, there are a range of neurotransmitters. Some neurotransmitters are excitatory. When they're detected by the receptors, they make the electrical charge more positive in the cell, a process called depolarization. This happens because the receptors allow positively charged sodium ions into the cell. This makes the formation of a new action potential more likely. However, some neurotransmitters are inhibitory. When they're detected by the receptors, they hyperpolarize the postsynaptic neuron, making it more negative by releasing potassium from the cell. This pushes it further from its threshold and making the formation of a new action potential less likely. So what's summation? Summation is the effects of all the excitatory and inhibitory neurotransmitter influences on the postsynaptic cell. These are added and subtracted, so summed, and if the threshold is reached, then the new action potential forms and then travels down the next axon. Summation is tricky, and many students find this process difficult to get their head around. So if you're struggling, rewatch what I've just said, find another video, do some further research, or make a little model. Draw it out in more detail. You'll get it if you try a few approaches. Now, as the receptors on the postsynaptic cell and the neurotransmitters are stored in the presynaptic cell, the communication is unidirectional or one-sided, meaning this process of information signaling can't happen in reverse. Next, now the neurotransmitters have been detected by the receptors, they detach. Some are broken down and some are recycled, moving back into the presynaptic cell in a process called reuptake. This resets the cell ready for the next fire. And to give you an idea of how fast this process is, a typical neuron will fire between 5 and 50 times a second. A number of medicinal and recreational psychoactive drugs interfere with this system to achieve their effects. 
that either inhibit or increase the transmission of certain neurotransmitters. For example, SSRIs are a class of drugs used for the treatment of depression and anxiety. SSRI stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. They block the reabsorption of serotonin back into the presynaptic cell, increasing its level in the synapse. The illegal drug cocaine works in the same way on the dopamine system. In the brain's reward centres, it blocks the reabsorption and removal of dopamine from the synaptic cleft by its transporters, increasing its signal. Bonus fact about synapses. In this video, we've talked about synapses in a very mechanical way. But if you accept that you are your brain and your brain's fundamental functions are all due to the interactions between your synapses, then you, your consciousness, all of your memories and experiences are due to the computing power of your synapses communicating. That might seem hard to believe, but consider how complex and powerful a machine your synapse communication system is. You have around 100 billion neurons in your brain, and a single neuron can have as many as 15,000 synaptic connections. Work by Neugen in 2010 demonstrates that for an average 20-year-old male, they have around 170 trillion synapses in their brain. Of course, numbers that big are difficult to imagine, but for some context, it's been estimated there are around 250 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. So if every star was a synapse, that would be around 680 Milky Way galaxies worth of synapses. Or think about it this way. If we wanted to map the brain and could count 100 synapses a second, it would take us just under five and a half thousand years to count them all. So now you know how fantastic your brain is, what are you gonna use it for? I hope you found this psych boost video useful. If you did, I've made more than 140 other psychology videos to help you with your studies as well as a website full of free resources. If you want to help Psychboost grow, subscribe and like. Also, tell your teacher and anyone else you know who studies psychology about the channel. Thanks for watching. Keep studying.